dispatched to the scene of this fire. As you pull up, obviously it's a working fire. As the crews are preparing to make entry, what do they see? Is there any visible fire? Is there any smoke? Where is the smoke coming from? Are any of the doors and the windows to the exterior of the building open? Are there any signs from the exterior of the building as you're preparing your fire attack that something is obviously not the way it's supposed to be? Let's take a look here. Take note of the chair. On the chair, there's mud. Against the side of the brick wall, there's mud against the wall. As we go closer and look towards the window, there's an obvious pry mark on the window where a tool has been used to force the window open. If you or your crew didn't force entry into this window, you should stop. You should immediately realize that force entry had been made prior to the fire and that the origin and cause of the fire may well be something other than accidental in nature. We've made it to the interior of the fire scene. We're at the entrance to the bedroom door where the fire occurred. Looking at the exterior side, the hallway side of the bedroom door, you can see that the door was closed at the time of the fire. The smoke staining and soot that's come out as byproducts of the combustion inside the room is minimal. There's no evidence that the fire has traveled from the interior of the room through the door out into the hallway, nor is there any evidence that the door was open at the time of the fire. We're going to open the door and move into the room where the fire occurred. We've made our way into the bedroom where the fire took place. It's obvious as soon as you come through the door that the majority of the fire, if not all of the fire, consumed the portion of the bed, the mattress, the box spring, the headboard, and the area where the curtains had hung on the front window of the house. Directly above the center of the bed, looking at the ceiling, you can see the line of the heat demarcation where the fire and the flames had impinged on the ceiling and the smoke and heat lines as the heat and smoke filled the room to a level about three foot off the walls as we could see in the area along this front wall. We're going to move now across the front of the bed to the other side of the room as we start to identify the contents, the fuel load, and look for potential origin and cause to the fire. Take note as we move across the interior of the room of what's remaining on the bed. There's some sort of planter, there's the window glass, and there's also what appears to be the remains of a purse or a pocketbook and another item in the middle of the bed. As we start to walk over to the side of the room closest to where the door is, we see the contents of the room. We see normal items of furniture, a dresser, a mirror, wall hangings, the protected areas on the wall, where the wall hangings had come down during the course of the fire. We see the mirror cracked from the heat of the fire, but what we also are able to observe is the amount of smoke that has covered the, the mirror glass, as well as the contents on top of the dresser. Nothing appears out of place or abnormal, with the exception of the watch case, which is in the open position. The remainder of the contents of the room in this area, the nightstand, the pole lamp, the contents on top of the dresser, and even the dresser drawers themselves, which are filled with clothing, appear normal, and also it is evident on examination that they are removed from the area where the fire originated, the majority of the fire being started in the center of the bed or concentrated on the center of the bed. What is worth taking notice here is on the floor in the room, directly in front of the dresser, is an overturned wooden jewelry box that has fallen down on top of the rug. This could have occurred during the course of the fire ground operations, but significant in its appearance, coupled with the tool mark on the end of the outside of the window, could lead to suspicion that there's a difference here between what we're observing and what we think could have happened and what the actual cause or origin of the fire might be. As we go back to the side of the room in close proximity to the side window, the window that has the pry mark on the exterior, we make some very important observations. We see a scuff mark on the side of the wall that appears to be mud, and directly below that, located on the floor, we see two items of jewelry. During our examination of the other side of the room, when we looked at the jewelry box on the floor, the jewelry box was empty. There was no contents in the jewelry box. We come back and we look at the dresser in this area. This dresser, although it contains normal items associated with the bedroom, we note no jewelry box or anything present in this area, yet we note jewelry on the floor. Located on the floor directly below the dresser on this side of the room is a lady's earring. 
an uncharacteristic place to find an earring coupled with the necklace on the floor and the mud marks on the side of the window directly below where the window had been pried. We bring our attention to the area of the bed. We have heavy fire damage in the center of the bed which has consumed the majority of the mattress. In the center of the bed, the bedding is burned all the way down to the springs leaving no bedding, bed covering, or mattress material in place. During the course of the examination of the fire scene that we would undertake in an effort to determine the origin and the cause of the fire, we would examine all the natural and accidental heat sources that are present in the room. We would also look at the burn patterns, we would look at the fire damage, we would look at the contents and how they were burned, and all of those indicators would bring us back to the center of the bed as where the fire originated or the area of origin of the fire. Our examination would take us through and would be able to eliminate all natural or accidental heat sources that would be present in this room. As we conclude our origin cause investigation, we're unable to determine a natural or accidental heat source that's present in the room that started the fire on the center of the bed. Coupled with the observations we made on the exterior of the building, the presence of the jewelry in the interior of the room, the scuff mark, and the lack of a natural identifiable heat source, the only potential ignition scenario possible for igniting this fire is the introduction of a foreign heat source to the materials available on the bed, coupled with the jewelry on the floor, the forced entry in the room, indicating that this scene is an arson burglary. Thanks for watching.